there's more than one way to get points for a constructed response. There's always more than one way to solve a constructed response. I'm going to show you standard method of getting through a problem like this, the most efficient method. But before I do that, let's talk about grabbing partial points. There was a layer of slow snow in Joe's driveway when it began to snow again. I'm going to draw a little picture of this situation. We got a layer of snow. I don't know. I don't know how tall that layer is. And it's snowing again. After 10 minutes, he measures two centimeters of snow. 10 minutes, two centimeters. After 30 minutes, he measures 3.6 centimeters of snow. Now you notice I put those little commas there. Those are some ordered pairs. Here's my thing though. All right, have I answered the question yet? Do I know what the slope is? I haven't answered the question yet. I haven't really done much of anything except to restate the problem in picture format. But you know what I did? I already have secured a half point because my information that I put in the box is on task and it is leading toward a solution. It shows some understanding of the problem situation. And this is top secret, but if you get half a point, if you can only get half a point for a constructive response, they round your first half point up to a one, one out of four. Now, we want to try to get twos, threes, and fours on our constructive responses, but if you're really lost, really stuck, show, show that you have an understanding, even if it's only a partial understanding of the problem situation, and you can get that one point. One constructive response point is worth 10 multiple choice points. All right, so big deal if you can get just one. Obviously, bigger deal if we can get more. This is a classic, classic, classic constructive response. They love to ask these. They'll give you two changing things. They ask for some different stuff in it. In this one, they're going to ask, what's the slope? They're going to ask, what does that mean? What does the slope mean in this situation? All right, they like to have a real-life connection question. They want to write an equation. All right, this one, I can almost guarantee you're going to have to write an equation for one of your constructive responses, and then they ask the follow-up question. Okay, now that you have the equation, use it to find something. Let's, let's start with the, the equation. We've, we've been working with this. There's a, there's a process. There's an efficient process to get an equation if you're given two changing things. And that process is, how much is each thing changing? My minutes are increasing by 20. My centimeters are increasing at the same time that my minutes are increasing by 20. My centimeters are increasing by only 1.6. Both of them are going up at the same time. We're going to have a positive rate of change or a positive slope. My setup right here, since I put minutes on the, on the left, I've got my, my X and my Y. So I am going to divide 1.6 divided by 20 to get a slope of 0 0.08 centimeters per minute. I guess I did find my slope first, so that, that could be the answer on slide one. And that's sufficient, that's sufficient as an answer, although myself Number one, you got to have it in the box. So I'm outside the box. That's a problem. But number two, I'd probably write something like this is the slope of Joe's line. Now, I did have some people divide the other way. If I divide 20 by 1.6, I'll get 12 and a half. That's fine. You, you can get some points for that. It's not standard. When you talk to your science teachers, they're going to want you to always put a distance divided by a time. So like miles per hour, kilometers per minute, centimeters per minute. That's the, that's the standard format. Typically, we let time be what's called the independent variable, or x. And we let a distance be our dependent variable, y. Coming back to our equation slide, after I know my rate of change, we have a standard format that we can write an equation from. We've gone over this. You don't have to memorize it. It will be on the formula page in the front. If you don't remember this, I've written it different ways. I like to write out the words 
rate of change or slope times x plus adjustment. But you, sh you should be able to look on a formula page and remind yourself, oh, yeah, 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 I need a number times x plus another thing to get y. And, and m for mountain. That's why, that's why they usually use m. y equals my slope, 0 0.08 times x plus that adjustment. All right, if you can get that far, this is another half point. We're still just up to one, but legit. If I can, if I can grab a half point on each slide, that's a that's a two out of four, and that is it. That is a decent score. That's that's proficient level. Three and four is what we want to get to for distinguished. Well, let's see if I can let's see if I can grab a half point on the uh, slide above. I can probably actually grab a full point on the slide above. Explain what the slope means in this situation. My units kind of do that explaining for me. It means that the snow is rising 0 0.08 centimeters every minute that it continues to fall, right? Nice and simple. So I just, I just write that out, okay? This last question, how many minutes will it take before the depth reaches 8 centimeters? I'm kind of going to need to finish my formula before I can get that answer, okay? But... Let's say I get my equation wrong. Let's say I, I don't know what this adjustment is. Here's a trick. I, I had no idea how to get this question mark. So I'm just going to I'm just going to call it 22. I'm wrong. It's not 22. But I put that on slide C. So I get I get only my half point for having half of the formula correct. On this on this slide here, when I use my wrong formula, I can still get the full point for this slide. I'm looking for an x value that will give me an answer of 8. And I could and I could just guess and check, right? I could just try numbers in for x until I came out with one that that gave me a number 8. When I find my x, I'm going to know I'm going to know that 22 is a bad answer because I need a negative x to get down to 8 and we can't go back in time. Let's get a legit answer. How do I get this blank? Right? I just pick pick one of these two points. I'm going to do, use uh, 30 and... No, I'm going to use 10 and 2 because they're, they're whole numbers. So when x... That's why it's important to label stuff. When x is 10, 0 0.08 times 10, then y is supposed to be 2. Do my little math. 0 0.08 times 10 is only... 0.8. I want the answer to be 2. I'm going to need to add a little bit to it. Full equation, full point, and then once again, move on to this last slide. Use the equation. Instead of the height being 2, I want the height to be 8 equals 0 0.08. It'd be a shame if, uh, if that number is not really an 8. All right, it is. 0 0.08 times how many minutes plus my adjustment. All right, and like I said, you could guess and check until you get a proper answer, or you can always use, got to remember back from the very beginning of the year, opposite operations. Opposite operations can always be used to uncover a value in an equation if there's only one missing value. Bang. 6.8 equals this. And then divide both sides by 0 0.08. And we'll find that our question mark is, I don't know, I need a calculator for this, 85. 85 minutes. Is that reasonable? Always a question we should ask. That's a, that seems like a big number. 85 minutes just to get up to 8 inches. But, or 8 centimeters. But, uh... Yeah, this is reasonable because I'm going to need to multiply by a big number since my rate is so small. I'm going to have to multiply by almost 100, right? 0 0.08 times 100 would be 8. And the only reason I don't have to multiply by a complete 100 is because I have that little adjustment there, 1.2.